let's go back. Not just back in time, but back where life began. The motherland, the land of treasures, culture, history, and with such beauty also comes great pain. The continent of Africa also faces the hardest challenges in the world, such as poverty, droughts, famine, and diseases. One of the diseases that takes Africa by storm is malaria. As a result of over 92% of malaria cases being found in Africa, the body found a resistance towards the disease that particularly protects them, and that resistance was the cellular evolution of sickle cell. What is sickle cell? They always talk to patients about sickle cell disease, make sure they understand that how you get sickle cell disease is an inherent disease. It's called sickle cell anemia because the disease actually depletes your blood volume level where you end up being anemic and you are deprived of oxygen and you have to um, manage the symptoms that go along with it. It's pretty much a hemoglobinopathy that where it causes chronic problems. Um, instead of the red blood cells being normal, they are actually sickle and that produces a lot of the complications related to sickle cell disease. A red blood cell normally is like a disc shape, okay, and the oxygen is on the inside. Um, with the sickle cell person, they'll have some normal red cells and then they'll have some that are defective with that gene. And what happens is when they release that oxygen, their blood, the cell actually becomes a sickle shaped. And because it's a sickle shape, it gets caught in different parts of the circulatory system and in the organs and it creates a situation where a person may become iron overload, um, they may have painful, um, a lot of pain when they're in sickle crisis, um, their liver may be affected because the liver acts to clean up, the, you know, to clean the body, and if they get lodged in the spleen, then sometimes they have to have the spleen removed. And those sickle cells are causing damage to your organs and causing damage to your vessels. Although it has been statistically proven that African Americans are significantly affected by the sickle cell anemia disease. However, there is a small percentage of Hispanics who are also affected by this disease. Symptoms that are included with the sickle cell anemia disease are episodes of hard to manage pain, usually known as a sickle cell crisis, painful swelling of hands and feet, frequent infections, delayed growth, vision problems, and anemia. Most sickle cell patients tend to live a very conservative life, avoiding excessive bouts of liberalness, which may precondition them to frequent hospital stays. <laughs> Like I said, I found out that I had sickle cell at the age of 23. Um, right after I found this out, like I said, I was getting prepared to have surgery. And I couldn't have surgery because I found out that I was expecting. And not only expecting one, I was expecting two. 
So it was a possibility that both of my twins would come out having sickle cell or the trait. I had sickle cell my whole life since I was a little boy. My mom was very cautious with me because I had the sickle cell disease. Sometimes, you know, with the disease, it uh, stopped me from doing certain activities like football, basketball, you know, certain sports that young boys like to do growing up. I have sickle cell trait. It really hasn't affected uh, my life to the extent that a person with sickle cell anemia might have, uh, but I do have to make sure that I'm hydrated, that uh, I'm taking care of myself physically, that I exercise, and that my diet is right. It's an autosomal recessive disease, which simply means that for you have to have two abnormal genes, one from both parents in order to get have sickle cell disease or sickle cell trait. If you have two parents with sickle cell trait, that every time they have a child, there's a 25% chance of them having sickle cell disease. Also, on the other end of the spectrum, there's also that same 25% chance of them having normal children, a normal child. And then, of course, that same two parents, there's a 50% chance of them having a child with sickle cell trait. It doesn't mean they're definitely gonna have a child with sickle cell disease, because that's the scary part of it. My patients look at me frightened. What it is is that there's a 25% chance every time they have a child. I didn't find out that I had the trait too much later in life. You know, initially I denied it. Then after three tests, it was confirmed that I had the trait. But one of the precautions that I take uh, as a result of knowing that I have the trait is making sure that I don't exercise in excessive heat because my research determined that even though you may have the trait, exercising in the heat can give you uh, an effect as if you have the sickle cell anemia and you could have some complications as a, ro a result of exercising in the heat. The pain I experienced going through a crisis is severe. You know, it feel like needles sticking you. The pain is so severe to the point, like especially if it's in your legs or something, you can barely stand or walk. My seven-year-old would say, well, mama, I want to play football. Why I can't play football? Or mama, I want to go run around, and my brother going to run around. Why I can't do the same thing he do? And it's me taking precaution and knowing what he can and cannot do. And I hate putting him kind of like in a box or a bowl saying, hey, you're not able to play football, but you can play something else or you can do karate. So it can be real challenging when you're having two kids the same age and one has a disease and one don't. And one thing, life is not fair because, uh, for instance, um, my boys are seven now. The one with sickle cell came to me one day and asked me, Mama, why, do I have, why was I the one that had to get sickle cell? Why, why did God pick me to have sickle cell? And it's like, how do you answer that? because he see his brother playing and doing football and doing whatever he wants to do, running freely. And then it's them times when he's going through a crisis and he can't do nothing. He can't move. I have to carry him up and down the stairs or carry him everywhere he go because he's on pain medicine that has him drowsy. So I can remember, you know, being in the hospital for a whole month and uh, and by the third day, I've been in pain for three days straight, not getting no relief. And mentally, you know, it, it bothered me because I know I feel, in, you know, deep down inside, I'm stronger than what I'm going through. But after a while, being in that hospital, that week turned into a whole month. My oxygen been very low. My blood count was very low. My hemoglobin been very low. I think my hemoglobin came all the way down to about a three or four. Being that low, that's almost like a, close to a near-death experience. Sickle cell patients can avoid stress, extreme temperatures, um, stick with their doctors prescribed medications and don't deviate from their doctor's prescribed medications in order to avoid having a sickle crisis.